Hello and welcome once again to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which debunks pseudoscience and promotes scientific temper. Today I'm going to discuss a game that is popular among money spinning YouTubers and college students. The game is called a Ouija board. It is sometimes wrongly pronounced as Oija or Ojo, but the correct name is Ouija board. If you've never heard of it or used a Ouija board, the concept is pretty simple. With a group or by yourself, you place your hands lightly on a triangular pointer called a planchet. The planchet rests on the board itself, which has the words yes and no in its top corners, all alphabets and numbers in the center and the word goodbye at the bottom. The idea is to summon the spirits you want to communicate with and they will move the planchet around the board to spell out answers to the questions you ask. Until they are you finally say goodbye and the spirits go back to wherever they came from. It all sounds pretty harmless but there is a long tradition of people believing that Ouija boards are dangerous occult gateways that can lead to demon possessions or worse. Just a search on YouTube reveals hundreds of videos with millions of views about such seances. The game is quite popular in college hostels where students sit for long hours into the night invoking the spirits. Even people who start out as skeptics may end up being big fans of this after seeing its miraculous powers. So today, let us see what is the science behind this curious little game and an explanation as to why the planchet moves as if directed by the spirits. The spirits are waiting on the other side. This game was invented by an American businessman named Elijah Bond in the 1890s as an innocent parlor game, but it was a spiritualist lady named Pearl Curran who added the occult nature to the game. The popular belief that the word Ouija comes from the French and German words for yes is a misconception. The name is supposedly taken from a word spelled out on the board when its inventor asked a supposed ghost to name it. Pretty interesting. At the time of its inception, American spiritualism was at an all-time high and this fueled the popularity of the game. The Smithsonian Magazine has done an interesting article on the history of this board which is worth a read and I will link it up in the description box below. So let us see how this is played. The groups of players sit around the board with their index fingers just lightly, remember lightly touching the planchet on the board. No other part of the arm is touching any part of the table or the board. Usually such seances are played in dim light like candlelight etc. There may be incense sticks or aromatic oils being burnt in the room. All this adds to the atmosphere. The players then summon a spirit, perhaps their long gone grandfather or grandmother or any other soul. Then they ask questions which they conceive in their mind and the spirit is supposed to answer them. Spirits supposedly have very good information about the past and the future. Based on the questions that you ask the spirit, the planchet moves supposedly on its own over the alphabets or numbers and spells out the answer. For closed ended questions, it can lead the planchet to the yes or no parts of the board. So what is the scientific explanation behind the planchet moving on its own? The mysterious mechanism that powers the Ouija board is called the idiomotor effect. The idiomotor effect is an example of an unconscious involuntary physical movement. That is, we move when we are not trying to move. If you have ever experienced the sudden feeling of jerking as you are about to sleep called as the hypnic jerk that I explained in my why do we dream video, then you have experienced the idiomotor effect. Your brain is signaling your body to move without your conscious awareness. The obvious difference is that when the idiomotor effect happens when you are awake, the reflexive movements you make are much smaller. In the case of a Ouija board, your brain may unconsciously create images and memories when you ask the board questions. Your body responds to your brain without you consciously telling it to do so causing the muscles in your hands and arms to move the pointer to the answers that you again unconsciously may want to receive. People who have played this have experienced a sort of numbness which the Ouija master will attribute to the presence of the spirit making your hands numb by using words like positive, negative energy etc. 
but the simple explanation is it is your own muscles that are strained due to it being kept hung in the air for some time. You experience this in your daily life. Remember the time when your class teacher used to punish you by making you lift your arms in class for not doing homework? Remember how your arm used to feel numb and started to pain sometime later? This is the same effect in play. You can try this with a simple experiment. Just clasp your hands and raise both your index fingers like this and look far through the gap. You can see that even without you doing anything, the fingers get attracted to each other like magnets. This is idiomotor response in simplest form. Also, the surface plays an important role in the movement. The board surface is very smooth and so is the bottom of the planchet. So it slides across smoothly at the slightest movement of your hands. Very similar to how a carom striker glides smoothly over a powdered carom board. Your involuntary movements leads the planchet to slide across a smooth surface to those exact words that you want to print out. Next in line for reasons for this appearing to work is called suggestibility. Many people amongst us are very suggestible. They can accept and act on carefully chosen suggestions of others. This usually happens when the seat of our cognition is blocked by superstitious belief that we no longer are able to think rationally and logically. Many people get influenced by the atmosphere which is pretty mysterious in all these seances. The low lighting levels, the smells of aromatic oils, chanting etc. can just add to the effect and make people think that something big is about to happen. And their brain just plays along and makes things happen. All signs and no ghostly souls. This real physical idiomotor effect causes some people to believe that seemingly miraculous or paranormal phenomena are behind these movements. It is a common element of many hoaxes since witnesses come to believe the possessed person is moving without his or her own control. Often the idiomotor effect is used to defraud people who visits exorcists, psychics, mediums and some spiritual gurus often leading to severe financial, physical and psychological harm. Of course, when it comes to these people, it is often difficult to ascertain if it is the idiomotor effect in action or conscious trickery. A classic example of idiomotor response used to exploit people for financial gain is dowsing. Dowsers usually hold two rods in front of them so that they are parallel. When they come across whatever it is they are trying to detect, which is usually water, the rods will cross over at that point. This is because they know where the point is and they subconsciously move their hands slightly which crosses the rods. The important thing to stress is that it is done unconsciously. The person who is crossing the rods does not realize that they are themselves doing it. In fact, it feels as if some external force is acting upon the rods. In fact, in India, many people use coconuts instead of rods, but the underlying trick is the same. James Randi, the famous magician come skeptic, has exposed a lot of dowsers using simple experiments for his $1 million challenge and you can learn about his wonderful feats in this video that I have done last year. Our favorite Sadhguru too uses this in his famous Rudraksha trick to make the Rudraksha necklace swing in a particular direction. He uses the idiomotor muscular movements to prove that if you hold a Rudraksh necklace over something with positive energy, it goes clockwise and it swings anti-clockwise when placed over something negative. A silly trick that fools thousands of his beloved cognitively biased followers. The idiomotor effect and the Ouija board is a classic example of how we can be fooled by our senses and ourselves. Many people believe in things because they have experienced them for themselves. They trust in the infallibility of their senses. Once a person starts to believe in one kind of pseudoscience, then it is easy for them to fall prey to many others or such gullible people can be led astray by someone intent of making a quick buck. The idiomotor effect is just one example of why we should use objective scientific testing rather than relying on subjective personal experience to work out what is real and what is not. Remember the principle that we learned a couple of videos ago? Occam's razor? Well, you could use that here. Instead of assuming the presence of ghosts, spirits, souls, unexplained energy sources, it is best to understand that your own mind is making the planchet move in accordance to what you want to believe. Of course, it goes without saying that there has been no evidence till date to the existence of ghosts, spirits or souls. 
that is the reason why i often tell my viewers not to just believe things trust them on the basis of empirical evidence i have done a video on this which you can check out for more on belief versus trust now is there a way to falsify this oh yes there are many ways to do that one simple way is to remove the smoothness of the surface place the planchet on a not so very smooth surface and your friendly neighborhood spirit would find it hard to move the planchet yet another way is to blindfold the people and have an external observer watch the movements of the planchet and write down the words if it were a spirit moving it it would give out the right answers even if the participants are blindfolded but whenever this has been tried it has resulted in a lot of gibberish and no sensible messages also they never give answers to questions that you yourself don't know the answer or it would be a plain guess remember munnabai mbbs and his answers to questions posed by the doctor in lagerho munnabai it's kind of similar and it is human nature to count the hits and ignore the misses so what the board gets wrong is easily forgotten and only the right answers are remembered by the people playing it the reason why people fall for this is very simple we want to believe our desire to confirm the existence of ghosts spirits and other improbable possibilities is what convinces ouija board users to believe that they have experienced something real like a real visitation from another dimension some sort of mystical sign or the presence of a ghost or a spirit the psychological harm comes when people get addicted to these kind of games and that can lead them to skip studies do physical harm to themselves and their friends or families because a non-existent ghost told them to we have seen several such instances like the brutal deaths in the case of the burari family in delhi and the killing of their child by educated professor parents in andhra pradesh which has been due to such delusions a video of which can be found in the description link so to conclude ouija boards are just a game and there are no spirits ghosts or departed souls that are giving you the answers it is your own mind acting through micro muscular movements that are made without you knowing it when your cognition is inhibited through your false beliefs you tend to perceive things which are not present you hear things without actually hearing it you see things and experience things which don't actually exist you are in a deluded state of mind and you don't realize you are doing all this because your cognition is on strike so please stay away from the pseudo scientific and bogus game called ouija board stick to monopoly or scrabble instead please share this if you think this information is beneficial to others i shall be back soon with another interesting video until then it's bye bye from pale blue thoughts